I'm sure some of you can relate to the following scenario. You're tired and a bit clumsy in the morning, and it's probably also a Monday morning, and while preparing your cereal, you accidentally knock them over. Now here's where normal people split from those crazy folks with 3D printers. You could just pick up the cereal by hand in a few minutes and go on with your day, or you could spend a week designing and printing a device that collects those particles back in the jar maybe 5 seconds faster. Super obvious choice, right? Okay, maybe not even faster, but just cooler looking and with lots of 3D printed parts. In this video I cover the process of how I build a cyclone separator, how they work, and how you can build one yourself if you like to. Of course I like my story with the cereal, but I actually built this device for a different reason. And that reason is to swap the raw material on my injection molder. The injection molding machine that I work on uses either shredded plastic flakes or pellets as input. Whenever I change the materials, it creates a big mess and it's just a very annoying process. I've always wanted to build a device for that and I figured this would be a perfect task for such a cyclone. My idea was that if I could connect the separator to a vacuum, I could just suck the flakes back into the jar where I store them. But how do cyclones actually work? Cyclones are mechanical devices used to separate matter from airstream or liquids. Dyson vacuums use their principle, as do sawdust separators. They are used in mills to separate fine dust from grains, as pre-filters for some engines, rock quarries and many many more. They are pretty much in every process plant and have existed there for long times. I recently went on a trip to Taiwan and somehow it was cool for me to see that even on the other side of the globe, on an island, you can see these devices everywhere, towering above factories and I'm always really excited when I scout one. A cyclone works by using a high-speed airflow and forcing it on a tangential path within a cylindrical or conical container. As the air spins, centrifugal forces push heavier particles to the outer edge of the cylinder where they lose momentum and fall into a collection chamber. The cleaned air then exits through the top of the cyclone. This simple but effective mechanism allows cyclones to separate particles from the air without the need for filters or moving parts. They are very low maintenance which is a big reason why they are so widely used. And another cool thing is that you can 3D print them. For my specific job I wanted to use a combination of a big cyclone as the first filter for large particles and smaller cyclones on top as the second filter stage for small particles. Kind of similar to the cyclone from this Chinese power plant here. These smaller cyclones needed to be arranged in quantities so that the airstream would not be too restricted. In theory you want the cross section of the airflow to stay roughly the same throughout the whole device and since you need smaller cyclones to separate smaller particles, that means more of them are needed to keep up with the airflow from the bigger stage below. I found this white paper on cyclones from the TU Dresden to get the proportions somewhat right. This is super interesting to me. There are many factors that affect the efficiency of a cyclone, like the depth of the dip tube, the diameter to length ratio, angle of the cone, and so on. There's really a whole art to designing these proportions, depending on the application you need. I then calculated the sum of the cross-section of the openings of all the small cyclones to be at the similar area of the big opening of the remaining tubing. The diameter of the first cyclone was determined by the IKEA jar that I planned on using as a particle collector. Another constraint for the design was that everything could be assembled with a few screws and threads and the prints. I started the design of the first small cyclone in Fusion 360 with the proportions I found in the paper. The cones are arranged as a group of seven around the outlet cylinder of the first cyclone stage. Everything that is filtered in that stage of the cyclone falls into the small chamber below. I reinforced it a bit with these cross braces and added threads so I could connect the parts. Then below I modeled the IKEA jar and the first cyclone stage in red. I tried to make everything as aerodynamic as possible, adding lots of chamfers and fillets. I just hope that helps. The first stage connects to the IKEA jar with three screwable hooks that pull on the jar the stronger I turn the screws. Then adding more threads and fine tuning parts so that it fits together nicely. On top I then model the part that connects to the vacuum just to have different options for sizes that I could connect to the outlet. On the dip tube I added a small filter grid. It of course restricts the airflow a bit but my feeling says that it will still work. As a last step I added small TPU ceilings which I also plan to 3D print. Everything has to be really airtight so that the pressure loss wouldn't be too big. And that's basically it.
With the Cyclone design, I can print almost everything on the small FDM machines that I have here. But every now and then, I need parts that are simply too big or too complex to make myself. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. The 3 d MIDI service helped me with a part that I needed for my injection molder project. The goal was to replace a total of 13 separate pieces with a single cover for the extruder drive. My own printers cannot handle a part of this size, so I used their service for this one. The process is really simple. You upload an STL on the PCBWay platform, you get an instant quote, and you can choose your materials and the surface finish, and they ship the parts straight to your door. I was a bit worried at first because large as an A prints can be very tricky. They tend to warp or deform if you're unlucky, but this one came out extremely accurate. Even at this size, the part is completely flat when I set it on the table, which is pretty impressive. I gave the part a bit of a spray paint finish so that it blends in with the other part of the machine. Overall, a really smooth process, and thanks to Priestly Way for sponsoring this video. Back to 3D printing. Almost all the parts of this build are 3D printable. Except the upper stage with all the small cyclones, they are also pretty easy to print and the orientation of the build plate is straightforward. Only that part needs a lot of supports, but it's still manageable I would say. I use 0.2mm layer height in all the parts and the material is always PTG. Except for the ceilings, those are made in TPU because they have to be a bit more flexible in order to tighten the connections. I tried making the upper stage from a transparent filament so that maybe it would be somewhat visible how the particles are collected. The TPU ceilings have a serrated pattern on top so that they grip better into the material. The same on the surfaces of the counterpart that the ceilings are attached to. Before I start assembling the parts, some of them have to be prepared with taped inserts. These are M4 inserts, I got them from CNC Kitchen and they just work super well when you want your parts to be disassembled again easily. I melt them into the parts until they lie flush on the 3D prints and wait until they are cooled down. Then first step is connecting this adapter piece to the big cyclone with two M4 screws and attaching the first ceiling. Then next I put together the second cyclone stage with the second dust chamber. Between those two parts there is another TPU ceiling. I really like how easily the threads connect, that is because I always change the margin between the threads in CAD. In Fusion 360 you can just use the press-pull operation with Q, which works wonders to get a bit more of a space between threads. That makes them just connect so much easier. Then the second stage is put on the connector piece, also with a few rotations. Then another set of three inserts goes into the big cyclone part in white. The surfaces counterfeiting the ceilings are also serrated slightly. I think this might just help making the fit between the parts a bit better and more airtight. Now only connecting the hooks with three knurled M4 screws and the tubing adapter. And that would be it. Actually, I forgot to install the dip tube here in the clip, so that has to be done in advance, and then the build is finished. Kinda looks like a nasal spray, but that wasn't on purpose. Now let's test it with some materials. I want to see whether particles still reach the vacuum, so I'm going to attach a new filter back that I can have a look into later. I want to test with a few materials that I could imagine are used for this device. For example, wood shavings or milling chips for small wood CNC's. And of course the plastic chips that I want to transport. I changed the adapter for the vacuum for a fitting one and set up my camera so we could maybe see some slow motion of the separation. It does the job with the sawdust quite well, just the really light and voluminous chips get sucked into the dip tube when the jar starts filling. A longer jar or even a bin would probably solve that issue. 
As expected, some remaining small parts in the airstream after the first stage were captured in the dust chamber above. That's pretty cool. Next up is material that I actually use in my molder. Collecting back the pellets works really well. Some bounce and stick also to the dip tube, but only when the jar fills up and once the vacuum is turned off, they fall down again, so that works okay. Now the last the shredder plastic types that I use most often in the molder and have to be changed a lot. This definitely works good enough and I can make use of it. With this dark material, it's even visible how particles are separated in the multicycle stage above. To check if particles have left the device unfiltered, I open the vacuum again and check the back. It's really hard to see, but some small particles definitely reach the back, but it's not a lot. I think over time the bag would still clog, because the filter bags in these vacuums usually clog from the smallest particles over time and not just from the big ones. I think this still extends the lifetime of the bag, but that is honestly up to further testing. Now the very last thing to test it with is the actual material that I want to change. So I want to change the shredder material from the blue cream cups to another one, so now let's see how this works. At first I was a bit surprised that it didn't work as well as in the tests, but then I realized with the Dyson vacuum that I used here, this time the setting was on Eco, and when I went to Boost, it really ate away the chips quickly. The build is of course not perfect, but for my work it performs really well, and just to be clear, it's simply a mechanical pre-filter for large particles before they would reach the vacuum. In a workshop environment, where you often have lots of chips or debris flying around that end up in regular vacuum bags, this can be pretty useful too. I also recently found another cool use for the Cycron, which is extracting pellets from these big bags they come in. I run tests on the Taos molder with these pellets and scooping them out of the bags can get pretty messy. Simply pinching the bag with a small cut and sucking the material out through it is much easier and faster. If you see an application for your workshop with this print, I created two different download kits for it. The full kit, free for Patreon supporters or on Kofi, it includes technical drawings, infographics, media, step files, fusion files, and several dust chamber connectors, depending on what setup you like to use the Cyclone for. It also contains different adapter sizes for vacuum connections and tubing, so you can fit it to various host diameters. And then there's also the free kit, available on Kofi. It contains the STL files of the latest version from this video, and it also includes a 3D printed version of the IKEA jar, since not everyone has one of these lying around. This kit also comes with multiple adapter sizes for different vacuum hoses and tubes. So this kit works perfectly fine if you just want to download it, print it and use it like I do in the video. If you'd like to support my printed projects, you can check out my work on Etsy or become a Patreon supporter. I'm most active on Instagram, where I share the latest updates and behind the scenes progress on projects like this one. And if you're curious what's next, this cyclone was actually made for a much bigger project called TARS. TARS is my desktop scale plastic recycling and injection molding machine. And if you'd like to see what it's about, you can find that in the video link right here at the end. Thank you for watching.